All right, guys, so welcome to the cockpit. Um, we can once again tell the sim that we're ready to fly. Press the ready to fly button in the lower right. So we begin in the cockpit. Now in an actual real world flight scenario, we would always begin our pre-flight by doing a walk around procedure. Uh, typically that's going to start actually in the cabin with checking various documentation. Um, and this sort of thing is not uh, really super practical to do in the sim environment because we don't have the manuals we can actually look at um, inspection records, things of that nature. So um, we're for our purposes going to omit the walk around. You know, if you'd like to, you can go outside of the airplane by pressing the end button on your keyboard. And once you do this, of course, we could uh, simulate that we're doing a walk around and checking the various components uh, that we would. But just keep in mind that in a real, uh, at the real airplane, there's a lot of things that are going to be checking that are quite detail oriented that you don't want to practice skipping over them in, in the sim. Uh, and then when you get to the airplane, kind of forget that you need to do them. Things like uh, checking for cracks, um, you know, that might be quite subtle or checking for, um, you know, cotter pins, things like that. Um, you can't relate to very well in the sim environment. So I would recommend uh, for today that we go ahead and just start with the um, starting engine procedure. So to do that, we're going to skip over on our checklist here, the pre-flight inspection. Again, never would be doing this in the real aircraft, but for our purposes, um, we're going to focus on the startup procedure. So we'll go back into the cockpit and we'll begin with the before starting engine checklist. When we're doing checklists, um, it's a good practice, even if you're flying alone, to verbalize each item. It helps to kind of slow you down, make yourself more deliberate, and it's really how a professional flies. So um, when we're beginning a checklist, we would always uh, start by saying the name of the checklist, in this case, before starting engine checklist. And then we would read each item on the left side of the line, which is the challenge, and then the response is after we've done or checked the item. So for example, uh, we would begin this checklist by saying before starting engine checklist, pre-flight inspection complete. So that verifies that we've done the walk around and any other tasks. Uh, so we'll call that good. Pre-flight inspection complete, passenger briefing complete. So this is where we would tell our passengers about any sort of uh, egress considerations, how to get out of the airplane in the event of an emergency, uh, how to remove their seatbelt, how to open up the door, uh, perhaps any other things that you'd like to tell them about, um, you know, maybe not from a evacuation standpoint, but just maybe to not touch anything if they've never been in a general aviation airplane before, or, you know, they can keep an eye out for traffic. Um, and of course, also any safety equipment like uh, fire extinguishers to make sure they're aware of where those, those are. So passenger briefing complete seats and seatbelts, uh, no seatbelt here in my sim setup. Um, but uh, everything is nicely positioned, so we're good there. Brakes, test, and set. So when we're testing the brakes, that um, involves pushing down the brake pedals, which I'm going to uh, go down to my uh, pedal view here and remove the yoke. You can do that, by the way, by just clicking here uh, where the yoke meets the panel. And now I can see my brakes. In the real airplane, when you push the brakes down, you should feel a... Um, very distinctive uh, pressure, like it, there, there's some feedback where they're not just going easily flat to the floor. Now my rudder pedals don't give that sort of feedback, but in the real airplane you would feel that, okay, I can feel that there's fluid in the um, brake lines and that the system should be working okay. Now parking brake. Uh, parking brakes in general aviation aircraft are <laughs> quite unreliable. Um, many pilots don't trust them at all and don't use them and simply will um, just hold the brakes themselves. Um, we could certainly use both. We can turn the parking brake on and hold the brakes, but in the end, it's really up to you to make sure that the airplane is not going to move when you're starting it up. Cause we have people that could be around us. Very important to make sure that even if the engine revs up, um, to a high RPM, higher than we're expecting that the airplane doesn't move. Okay. So we've got our brakes test and set circuit breakers check in. So those are these, um, little pop-outs here that if we had some sort of a electrical fault, these would pop out to, um, protect the circuitry. So we're just making sure that none of these are popped out of the panel. So all of those look good. Circuit breakers are checked in electrical equipment off. So that consists of our master switch, our avionics master switch, all these lights and the radios are, you know, off in, uh, 
as a consequence of that already. So our electrical equipment is off. Avionics master switch is also off. We just checked that. Fuel selector valve on both. So to check this, we're gonna go down here and the fuel selector valve is on the middle or both position. This indicates that fuel will be drawn from both tanks as opposed to just one. And this is the normal position in a 172 for pretty much every scenario, unless uh, there's some sort of imbalance that you're trying to level out. Okay, so we have the fuel selector valve on both, fuel shutoff valve, push full in. Now, this one in Microsoft Flight Sim, um, it's a bit hard to tell, but it seems that the default position is incorrect when you start up. So uh, it should be into the panel, pushed all the way forward. And right now it's pulled out. So we're gonna go ahead and push that in. Um, not very easy to see with this uh, cable in the way, but it appears to be pushed in now. So we'll call that good. So fuel shot up valve is on, pushed full in. And then avionic circuit breakers, they have this item sort of repeated. I already checked all the circuit breakers, but we'll again, Check this row here of avionic specific circuit breakers, which are all pushed in. Great, so now we can say before starting engine checklist complete. We'll go to the next page for the starting engine with battery procedure. So starting engine checklist. Throttle open to a quarter of an inch. We'll do that by uh, taking our throttle lever and just pushing it uh, forward until it looks like we have about a quarter of an inch displacement uh, here in the cockpit that may not line up exactly to a quarter of an inch on your physical throttle control, but just a approximation here, throttle to a quarter of an inch. Mixture idle cutoff, so that is all the way back. Um, although you can see right now in the cockpit, um, it is actually full rich. So I just need to move my physical throttle and that will kind of send an updated signal to the airplane. Um, keep in mind, if you fly older 172s in real life, um, like a, a carbureted variant, as opposed to this one, this is fuel injected, the mixture actually would be full rich for the beginning of the startup procedure. Here in the newer 172s, it's a bit more complex, um, but we'll walk through the next steps coming up here. So uh, mixture is idle cutoff, uh, propeller area clear. So this is uh, for safety of other people around us. Now we have this um, uh, ground crew guy here who unfortunately uh, doesn't seem to move away no matter what I've uh, tried doing. So um, perhaps if you use the pushback mode for an airliner, that may be able to make them move away. But um, for today, we're going to ignore uh, their presence and um, just look out for anyone else. So we'll just take a good look around the airplane, make sure there's nobody in the vicinity. And we're also going to open up our window and yell out clear prop. And that's our way to alert anyone to uh, stay away because we're starting up. Okay, so propeller area is clear, master switch on. So we'll go down and we'll turn our master switch on both sides of it, alternator and battery. Flashing beacon on. So that's this switch here. This would actually typically be turned on by the previous pilot um, as they shut down the airplane. Um, but uh, in this case, they turned it off in the default cockpit setup, but we'll turn it on. And uh, next step. So on the checklist here, you note there's kind of a block that I've marked off in red. This is the priming procedure. This is how we can get some initial fuel into the cylinder so we can start up. Um, it says, that there's a note, if the engine is warm, you can omit uh, steps six, seven, and eight. So um, what would be a warm engine? Well, if we just flew the airplane and we came back in and then we're gonna be starting up and taking off again after you know 15 minutes, uh, probably the engine is warm at that point. So we don't need to do this um, priming procedure. Uh, certainly if it's a hot day, then that would be another reason. Um, but today uh, we haven't flown before and we'll say it's not a particularly hot, particularly hot day. So we'll go ahead and do the priming procedure. So to do the priming procedure, it's a bit complex um, the first few times you do it. Uh, so bear with me, we'll go slow and take it step by step. The first uh, step is to turn the fuel pump on. Um, when we do that, you're, if you listen, you'll hear a pump noise. Okay, so fuel pump is on. Now the next step is to go mixture full rich for three to five seconds 
And really what we're looking for is a positive fuel flow here. So I'm gonna uh, zoom in so you can see exactly what's happening. So I'm gonna go mixture flow rich for three to five seconds, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, and then mixture to idle cutoff. Now you might notice the needle hardly moved. Uh, that's more of a Microsoft Flight Sim thing than a real life thing, um, but uh, that's the way that it's simulated in here. Okay, and then we can go mixture, or excuse me, fuel pump to off. And the priming procedure is now done. Okay, so now we have some fuel in the cylinders and we can actually start up the engine. Um, if it's been a little while since you checked that you were clear, um, then you might wanna look around again, maybe yell clear prop once more and we'll call it good to go. So uh, the way to do this startup procedure, it's a bit uh, tricky to do it exactly correctly. So I'm going to actually keep my left hand on the mixture and my right hand on the uh, magneto switch here. And I'm gonna go one click, that's right, two clicks left, three clicks both, and then the, ne the next click will be start. So what it says to do is you go to start, you release when the engine starts, meaning when the engine, you can hear it fires up. And then uh, when the engine starts, we go mixture full rich. So we're just gonna go to start, wait till we kind of feel that rumble of the engine in the real airplane. We can tell it's you know sustaining itself for a moment and then we go mixture full rich. So here it goes to start. Okay, there it started and mixture full rich. Okay, great. So now always check your RPM, make sure that it's below around a thousand or so, so we're not blowing you know dust and dirt other people away behind us, uh, which it is right now, looks great. And the very first thing we wanna check aside from that is our oil pressure being in the green. Um, if it weren't, then we could be damaging the engine quite a bit if we left the airplane running. Um, right now it's actually below the green. Um, one reason that could be is because our RPM is a bit low. So I'm gonna bump it up to a thousand RPM and see if we have any difference. So it goes up a little bit, but still below the green. So. In real life, I would probably want to uh, have the mechanic take a look at this and, and see what the issue is, if there is some sort of a inaccuracy with the gauge or some sort of concern with the uh, engine. But um, today, this is the way it is in Microsoft Flight Sim uh, at this power setting, so we'll, we'll run with it for now. Uh, so we have the oil pressure is checked, navigation lights on. So those are gonna be our um, colored red and green lights on the wings. And avionics master switch can come on. That'll turn on all of our radios. Again, we turn both sides of that master switch on. The radios, uh, step 14 here, those turn on as a consequence. And finally, uh, flaps can come up. Um, since we didn't do the full walk around procedure, the flaps were already up. So nothing to be done there. All right, so that's it. Starting engine checklist is complete. Um, I did add one more item, uh, which is mixture lean for taxi. Leaning the engine, it's a fairly sizable topic to learn about, um, but on the ground, it's a bit simpler. The idea is to not waste fuel, um, so to make flying cheaper for everyone involved, and also to help prevent um, lead deposits and just build up on the spark plugs, and that can happen if you're operating the engine at a low RPM with a rich mixture um, when it's not needed. So to lean the mixture, um, there's a procedure in the POH, which if you uh, scroll down um, to the amplified procedures, you'll see a section that talks about leaning for ground operations. And it, it, it's actually quite simple. It says um, after starting the engine and it's running smoothly, set the throttle to 1200 RPM so there is 1200 and then you lean the mixture for maximum rpm so we lean the mixture and the principle here is as we bring the rpm back the excuse me as we bring the mixture back in other words we lean it the rpm should actually trend upwards uh, so we're just looking for it to go upwards until it reaches a maximum you don't see a whole lot of difference here in the sim right now but um, we'll okay there's a little drop so we'll call the peak somewhere about here Typically, if you bring the mixture knob about an inch or so back, um, that's roughly a good spot to be if you're you know, having trouble with this uh, procedure in the sim. So we'll call that complete uh, mixture lean for taxi. 
So I added that myself to this checklist and sometimes, you know, checklists from the manufacturer, these are your kind of gold standard baseline, but they may not include every little detail that you want to consider uh, as a pilot to operate the airplane well. So um, this is just one personal thing I added. Um, let me make sure lean for taxis. So starting engine checklist is complete.